Minnesota's economy continues to perform above expectations according to the February budget and economic forecast. But there are a number of risk factors, like the rate of inflation, the volatility of energy prices, and continued geopolitical conflict that threaten the accuracy of the outlook. Joining me to talk about how these risks impact the state's economy is the state economist, Dr. Laura Kolumbakitis. Welcome. Glad to be here. The elephant in the room is Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine, and the forecast did not take this into account because it happened after the outlook was completed. In your view, how dramatically does this change things? So this could change things very dramatically. Uh, this, it, it's un, unprecedented. I know we've been saying that about economic conditions for the last two years, but uh, it, I don't know when we'll fully know what the impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine will be on, um, on the U.S. economy and consequently on Minnesota's economy. So it's going to affect the European economies more than the U.S., uh, but the repercussions are not fully known. The forecast projects inflation to remain high through 2022 and then settle down to a comfortable pace in 2023. But what impact might the conflict in Ukraine have on inflation? Yeah, so uh, the, first, the first impact that we've seen already is in oil prices, higher oil prices. And uh, oil and energy in general is an input to uh, the production and distribution of consumer goods. And so higher energy prices boost overall price inflation. And that's something that we're seeing, uh, we're seeing already. Uh, in addition, agricultural commodity prices uh, are also being affected. Those are higher and those are inputs into production as well. So those help, will help to boost uh, inflation going forward. Well, and you mentioned agriculture. Ukraine is considered the breadbasket of Europe. Minnesota is part of the breadbasket of the United States. So how might you expect farmers and other related agricultural industries too fair in this new reality, what are some of the challenges that they may face? So for, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about farmers in a moment, but for uh, agricultural, um, for food processors, for instance, we have an important uh, concentration of food processing industries in our businesses in Minnesota, and for them, their prices are going up, their input prices are going up at a time when their labor costs are going up as well. And so that's something they're having to adjust to and having to potentially pass those prices forward to consumers. Um, for farmers, uh, the the main outputs, agricultural outputs of Russia and Ukraine are um, have that that we've been watching have been wheat and sunflower. That those are things that Minnesota does produce, but they're, they're not the largest um, crops that we produce. So the farmers that are in those sectors are adjusting their marketing plans for potentially higher prices. They're potentially adjusting their planting plans as well. Well, so inflation is sort of the overall concept here because we just don't know. Everything kind of works together. Uh, we have energy issues, supply chain issues, uh, just having enough food and where the food is being grown. But another tool is the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. and their monetary policy, which they use to control inflation. With this geopolitical risk, how much power does the Federal Reserve have to really um, kind of keep a handle on inflation in the United States and then in Minnesota? The addition of these risks makes the Fed's job a lot harder. So they have, they have a lot of tools, they do have a lot of power to control inflation, but uh, you know, a month ago, a couple of months ago, they weren't expecting this kind of disruption. And the inflation can change because of people's expectations where businesses and households think inflation is going, that matters. And so if people's expectations become sort of unanchored from the Fed's long-term target, so you know, if you think people think the Fed can actually do this, right? So the Fed is going to be able to target 2% inflation, then that keeps expectations lower and that in itself uh, you know, is a self-fulfilling prophecy. But the opposite is true too. If people start to expect higher inflation, they'll get it. So let's talk a little bit about labor force participation, because that's also a risk factor, whether there's enough workers. Mm -hmm. uh, the forecast said that the state will recover to pre-pandemic employment levels next year. Mm -hmm. And our current unemployment rate is 3.1%, which is pretty low. Yeah. So do we have the labor force that we need in order to keep growing our state economy? 
a tight labor market is the biggest, one of the biggest challenges for employers right now. Uh, we do have uh, slow labor force growth, and we had slow labor force growth prior to the pandemic even. And then during the pandemic, a number of Minnesotans left the workforce, and some of them for retirement, some of them to take care of kids. And so our labor force participation rate went down. So this is uh, gonna continue to be a challenge for employers. Uh, wages are being pushed up, and that may draw some people back into the labor market. But if people retired, it's kind of hard to get them back into the labor market. So it's going to be a challenge going forward. The revenue forecast is higher on all fronts, hence the surplus. Uh, individual income taxes, sales taxes, and corporate taxes. So on the first two, when I think this through, it makes sense to me that income taxes are higher because wages are higher, and also that sales taxes are higher because incomes are higher, and also maybe a little bit left over from the pandemic mm -hmm. you know, stimulus money that we were all spending. Um, so it, presumably it's true that the tax revenue will level off at some point? Yeah, that is actually built into the forecast that we have slower growth in later years because the expectation is that some people are spending out of some of that saving. The stimulus payments, the pandemic unemployment insurance benefits, those led to very high savings rates. Uh, that is dissipating. People are using that money up and so growth is slower in later years of our forecast. And I also mentioned corporate profits and Corporations have contributed to the higher revenue and their profit level is expected to outpace the previous forecast. Mm -hmm. So corporations seem to be doing well. To what do you attribute the health of the corporate coffers? So it's all related that if wages are going up, if, if uh, people are spending out of savings, if incomes are going up, then they're generating, generating sales and generating business for those large multinational corporations that pay, sales t pay, pay corporate tax in Minnesota. So as the consumer goes, so goes corporate profits. Now, remarkably, in this entire conversation, not once have we mentioned or have, well, yeah, either of us have mentioned the pandemic, mm -hmm. which for the past two years has been like an essential part of every single conversation. Have we as a nation, individuals, state, have we learned something about how to navigate, you know, in, in the event that there's another variant in the future? Are we better positioned now as a state, especially to weather this without major disruptions? I think so. Now, I, I'm not in the business of predicting what the next variant is, and I'm not an epidemiologist, but it does seem that we have built both the, the public sector and the private sector and households have built tools and plans and procedures for what to do when the next variant occurs. And hopefully it will be less disruptive and we have learned how to manage our businesses and manage our jobs under those uh, difficult circumstances. Dr. Laura Colomakitis, thank you. My pleasure.